basic question, but how do you feel about your performance tonight? I feel good. I felt like it's a, a good uh, good fight for me. I've never got a knockout with my hands, so uh, yeah, I feel good all around. Can't complain. I guess when you landed that one, you didn't know that that was over. Yeah, like when, when I hit him, I like didn't even know it landed so clean. But obviously, when he fell back and his eyes were like behind his head, I would like I knew it was over. But I mean, like I, t I told my coach too, because like when we spar, <clears throat> like if I hit somebody and I drop him in our gym, we we run up on him and we, we try and keep like hitting him. So I, that's like how I how I trained. So even in the beginning, like when I I didn't even know I poked him in the eye, but when I seen him turn away from me, I was just like kill him. While I was just gonna try and kick him in his head, but but uh, Big Josh stepped in and I didn't hear him say stop. So kind of the same thing when I knocked him out. I just, until the referee stops me and pulls me off, just keep, keep hitting him. And you were undefeated going into this, right? Yeah, I, I'm undefeated. I, I lost um, Austin the show to Ally. I committed to a split decision, but, but technically, on my uh, pro record, yeah, I'm undefeated. Is that something that really matters to you at all, staying undefeated? Honestly, I, I could care less. I, I, feel, I feel like um, when I was coming up, I was like, man, I got to be undefeated. I got to be undefeated. You know, it's like my resume, blah, blah, blah. But, but I'm in the UFC now, and, um, and I'm working my butt off. and. And honestly, like trying to hold on to my record, being undefeated, I, it's something that I don't really care for anymore. I'm getting older and more mature as a fighter, so it, it, it is what it is, just a, a record. With the knockout something coming so close after the, the eye poke, I mean, are you concerned that people will, will tie those two things together? Um, not really. I mean, it is what it is. I, I feel like um, it's kind of out of my hands when it comes to like like that stuff. Um, I feel like he, you know, he took a break and all that, and, and the ref said go go again. So honestly, I just, I just go by what, what the referee says. Did you feel that that you had poked him? No, I no, I didn't. I did like a, a step back right hook, like from orthodox, a step back south palm throw right hook, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I guess I, I hit him in the eye. I honestly didn't even. All, all I say because I missed with the hook, and I kind of turned like this. And by the time I turned back around, he was already turned like this away from me, away from me. So I thought maybe like I just rocked him. He was like kind of rocked. So I went to go. I was gonna kick him, but I heard Big John. No, no, no stop. So like I pulled the kick, and then then Big John stepped in. And he was like careful. And I was like okay. You said it's the first time you've gotten a KO with your hands. Have you been less confident in your hands in the past, or you think it just was something that never landed? Um, I, I just kind of like I, I just grew up kicking a lot, you know, and uh, kicking and wrestling, and, and I've always relied on my hands. But I felt like coming up with the people that I spar with a lot, they were all hands because they're shorter than me, like Jeremy Stevens. And all I did was throw bricks, so I had to get good at you know defending hands a lot. So it kind of when I went to Alliance and I started working my hands a lot, I kind of came back full circle. And not only did I have defense, I had offense going with it too. And I got more confident too. Yes. Let's talk about Alliance. Obviously, the champ, uh, Dominic Cruz, is down there. You've got Ross Pearson. You've got some great guys down there. Who did you work with mainly before this? Um, a lot of my sparring rounds were really Ross Pearson. Uh, I got, yeah. He's a beast. Oh, dude. Like, uh, I, I would I would literally come to practice. It's so funny. I was telling my milestone Chandler about this. I come to practice, and I'm the type of guy like when we're warm up for sparring. There's like a bunch of killers in the room, and I'm like, okay, if I don't go ask coach and have him put me with somebody, I'm gonna go with the weakest guy here because I'm nervous today. So like I go to coach thinking, you know, oh man, who are you gonna put me with? Put me with? I went with Ross last week. He's gonna put me so easy. He'd be like, oh, you're in the cage three rounds with Ross. I'm like, man, like I should. They're good for asking, but but yeah. So Ross and then uh, Michael Chandler and uh, Paul Bradley too. Yep, so beast. All, all of them. No easy rounds. Can you take out uh, Phil? Phil Davis. <laughs> no, he's he's so big. I don't even spar with him because he would. Uh, he, yeah, he's so big. But but I do grapple with him, and uh, that's pretty cool because we go at it pretty good. He, yeah, he's a good grappler. He's a yeah, beast. Yeah, I, I got out muscle him. <laughs> you know, prior to this, you know, coming off the show, you weren't necessarily heralded. You kind of flew under the radar. You know what I mean? Now you're on a really good run. You put together some solid wins. Is the underdog title kind of stripped from you? Um, I don't know. I feel like that just goes with, with my personality. I feel like a lot of people just write me off because, I, I mean, if you look at me, I'm not like an intimidating looking dude. I'm not out calling people out. And I, I just I, I just work hard at myself and then I, I focus in on what I have control over. I, I'm, not, I'm not like on Twitter all the time <clears throat> calling out stuff and then putting stupid stuff so I can get attention. I really don't, I don't need attention. I'm happy with myself. I, everything I put on Twitter, it's like real life stuff. Like when I'm like, I went to the gym, I went sparring. I look at other people's Twitter sometimes and they're like, got funny this and funny that. And I'm like, man, where do they get all this time to, to get all these jokes and stuff? I'm like, I'm just in the gym all the time. So so yeah, I think, I think a lot of people just write me off and I'm on a dog because of that type of stuff. I'm not out calling people out. I'm not out, you know, trying to get everybody to talk about me or whatnot. It's like, I don't, I don't know. I just do, I just do my own thing. Mm -hmm. I've always kind of been like that. And it doesn't really even seem like you're feeling the pressure to do it. It's like, you <clears> know, I, I think a lot of uh, fighters feel kind of pushed into selling a fight and 
It doesn't even seem like you're concerned with that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, I'm not because I don't really have any control over it. You know what I mean? It's like the only thing I have control over is my training and then going out there and just and just fighting. I don't even have control over winning because there's so many good guys in the UFC. I just, all I do is focus on like what I have control over and that's just working my butt off and that's just having fun, really trying to enjoy this because like you said with the pressure, if I let all that pressure get to me, this, this what I do isn't fun anymore. And as soon as it's not fun anymore, that, that's when I got a problem because, uh, I mean, life's short, man. I'm, I'm doing it because I, I love to do it and, uh, I don't got time for for like to think about pressure, all this pressure that I just focus in on the my, my girl and my close training partners, and it's like it's like we just have have good times, you know, training together, and we're we're like a team and a family. Congratulations! Thank you guys so much. Good job. Sure.